This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. If you're getting bugged nonstop from robocalls, you are not alone. This morning, Call 6 Investigates is alerting you to a new twist on an old scam. Plus, we continue to look at programs helping students get ready for life after the classroom. This morning, our Aaron Lish introduces us to a program connecting students to the transportation industry. And Colts kicker Adam Vinatieri is tackling the rumors head on. This morning, hear what he says about his recent struggles on the field. It's 5 o'clock on your Wednesday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Meredith Barrick. And I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is with us this morning and he's been pretty chill, you could say, this whole week and that continues yeah, what is, today. Yeah. What have you been doing? Hey. <laughs> you, you ever heard of that country song by Luke Bryan? Sunrise, sunburn, sunset, repeat? There is we that, go. Basically, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> the soundtrack go, of Todd's go, life. Going yeah. outside, getting a little sunburn, and sun goes down, go to bed, and then we show up, and we just do it all over again. <laughs> and uh, that's the case here in the forecast once again today. We are going to be starting off potentially with a little bit of patchy fog. So what's happened every morning, and you just saw the change there come in at the top of the hour. Throughout the past few mornings, the fog has settled in as the temperatures continue to cool off here this morning. So visibility reduced a little bit there in the Muncie area, but I'm probably expecting that to drop a little bit more here. So just know to north there is some patchy fog. Once again, here's the view in downtown Indianapolis this morning and it's not an issue as of right now in and around the metro area. Temperatures running a little bit cooler and that's another change. This morning temperatures are a little bit cooler than they have been. A few 50s out there right now in Tipton right at 60 in Bloomington as well as Muncie and Richmond. But once the sun comes up, any fog will burn off and will warm it up very, very quickly. Once again, the storm track is through the Minneapolis area. We are going to be high and dry throughout the day today. So it's a sun filled day with a little bit of humidity building in as the day goes on. 80 degrees by the noon hour. Our high temperature today, Lauren, is up to 86. Hey, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look right now at your commute. No crashes to report around the metro area. We just have some ongoing construction projects and you can see the red there on the map. That ongoing construction on the southeast side set to wrap up on Saturday, but it's still closing southbound westbound I-465 between I-70 and I-65. So keep that in mind. But right now, let's take a live look over to the west side. This is where we also have some construction work ongoing here at I-74, traveling westbound from I-465. Overall, right now, everything is traveling up to speed. It's hard to keep up with criminals trying to steal your money. Call 6 Investigates is working for you with a warning about a new twist on an old scam. Federal investigators say the con artists are making calls, saying they're from the Social Security Administration and your benefits will end. Here's what one of the calls may sound like. In order to connect with a Social Security Administration officer, press 1 now. In case we did not hear from you, your social will be blocked permanently. To connect with the officer now, press 1 and you will be automatically be connected with the concerned departments. The Federal Trade Commission says do not press 1. That is a ploy to get your personal information and money. The real Social Security Administration will never tell you to wire money, send cash, or put money on a gift card. And it will never call you and threaten your benefits. Arson investigators are still trying to figure out why this man poured pints of accelerant onto the street and lit it on fire in clear view of first responders. Yeah, really odd video here. The Wayne Township Fire Department sent us this video from the Mars Hill neighborhood on Lyons Avenue. Investigators say that this man soaked the pavement with some kind of accelerant for nearly two blocks. So when firefighters arrived, they put out a small fire and then as they were waiting for the arson investigators, a man returned and tried to relight the fire. Well, he sped off in a light colored four door sedan and several area security cameras caught him in the act. If you know anything about this fire or this man on your screen, you can call Crime Stoppers today. It is 317 262 tips. An Indianapolis man has died weeks after a West Side house fire left him severely burned. The Marion County Coroner's Office has now ruled his death a homicide. Police say 23-year-old Trevor Shaw died last week. He'd been in the hospital since a house fire on Beasley Drive on August 22nd. That's near 34th Street and Lafayette Road. If you have any information about the fire, Trevor Shaw, or the case in general, please call Crime Stoppers. 
An autopsy is scheduled for today to determine what caused the death of an eight-week-old baby in Johnson County. State police say the child was dropped off at a babysitter's in the Pennington Mobile Home Park Tuesday morning in Franklin. Police were called to the area just before 11 o'clock for a medical emergency. They took the baby to the hospital where he or she died. Right now, this is being treated as a death investigation. Authorities out in Terre Haute are looking for a man who was mistakenly released from the Vigo County Jail. Sheriff's officials say that 48-year-old Greg Shepard was released without a court order back on September 5th. Shepard was being held on criminal confinement, battery, and theft charges. Sheriff John Plassey doesn't believe that Shepard is a threat to the public. The sheriff says his department is reviewing procedures to make sure that no one is mistakenly released again. A Southern Indiana judge wants to return to the bench after pleading guilty to a misdemeanor battery charge. The charges stem from a fight outside of a downtown Indianapolis White Castle. Clark County Circuit Judge Andrew Adams requested the reinstatement on Tuesday. The two felony counts leading to his suspension were dismissed under a plea agreement earlier this month. Adams and fellow judge Brad Jacobs were shot on May 1st while attending a conference in Indianapolis. Jacobs has since returned to the bench. Black Friday and Cyber Monday will be here before we know it. And we can't wait, Lauren. I know, right? That also means a lot of packages will be out for delivery. Well, all those goodies have to get from the warehouse to your front door. And students are getting a chance to help make it happen through a process and a training at the National Transportation Center. Our own Aaron Lish is joining us live there right now. And Aaron, we're looking at how students are becoming technicians. Absolutely. So the big purpose is the students are supposed to get this technician's uh, program into their belt and be able to help those truck drivers get all those deliveries from point A to point B. We have Tom Weisenbach here with the CEO of NTC. Tell us a little bit about the programs that you have here. You have electrical and you have diesel. Yeah, we focused on those two for our first year. Uh, our founder, Preston Harrison, a uh, Vietnam vet, wants to give back to the trucking industry. It's been so good to him. Wants to bring in skilled labor, talent that can help an industry that desperately needs that. So we focus right now, and the biggest need for our industry is drivers and diesel technicians. Electrical is a part of our diesel tech. So if someone wants to come in and do electrical, that's actually the first six weeks of our diesel program. Um, all of our curriculum was created with input from the industry. Uh, that's the biggest thing I think we did is go out and ask the industry, what do you need your diesel techs to know? We're a competency-based program. So for us, we ask the industry, what do you need? And we build everything around what their needs were. And what's great is it's free for these students, which it's amazing to walk out debt-free. Yeah, we're very fortunate. We have a foundation as well, a separate company, a 501c3. Industry has supported that well by putting in scholarship funds. So if someone's interested in coming to the National Transportation Center, they literally don't have to go through thirty forty thousand dollars into debt and it's also a short program we're done in 20 weeks for the diesel program and that's actually part-time it's two evenings and on a Saturday um, but most importantly again coming out debt-free that's a big thing that Preston said we had to create was a program where people didn't come out with large amounts of debt um, so they can go right into the workforce and, and really take care of their family all right, well, we talked to some students, and we're going to actually hear from them in the next half hour. But for now, we're going to send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Aaron, thank you so much. The time right now is 5.08. Indianapolis is expanding a program aimed at bridging the gap between police and our community. The city is hiring two new pacemakers. These new positions will work specifically with young people who may be struggling, connecting them with mentorship services to help them survive and thrive. Potential peacemakers can apply right now on the city's website this last through September 30th. Kickers miss kicks in the NFL every Sunday, so it shouldn't be a big deal when your team's kicker goes into a bit of a slump. But when your kicker is the best ever, it's a different story, such as the case with the Colts and Adam Vinatieri. He had two more missed extra points on Sunday against the Titans. That's five misses in the first two weeks of this season. Vinatieri quickly dispelled any thoughts of retirement on Tuesday and says he is ready to take a closer look and get better. I'm always probably, well, you guys like to critique stuff, but I'm always my worst cr critic when it comes to that. And, uh, um, yeah, you know, I mean, obviously it's it's not been a, a good start to the season, but um, I'm proud of all the guys, my teammates and stuff, that uh, continue to fight and pick it up when we need it and only good support in the locker room and that kind of stuff. So uh, it's time for me to get out there and, and help my team win games instead of the other way around. 
Then as Harry says he feels fine physically. We'll see if he can get things figured out for the home opener on Sunday against the Falcons. We all have our off days, Lauren. Oh yeah, we can agree with that. Well, more schools are using the internet to communicate and that is attracting, you guessed it, hackers. Just after the break, what one expert says that schools should be doing to better protect your child's personal information. It's 509. We'll be right back. Airing Hoosiers only on RTV6. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana, 512 on your Wednesday, and we're keeping a close eye on your roads. Here's a live look in Fishers, I-69 at 106th Street. Traffic is moving along just fine, both northbound and southbound here to our northeast in Hamilton County, so no problems here to slow you down. If you're interested in working in Boone County, companies will be looking to fill more than 800 positions at a career fair this evening. It goes from 4 to 7 at the Zinesville Town Hall. The fair is free and open to anyone. Companies in manufacturing, education, healthcare, and other industries will be there, including Zinesville Community Schools, Spherion, Allied Universal Security Services, and many more. Well, this morning, Pentagon says it will not move forward with three border wall projects because it doesn't have the money for them. The 20 miles of wall in California and Arizona were to be paid by use, uh, using some of the $2.5 billion that was allocated for 135 other miles of fencing. But the original project cost more than anticipated. The $2.5 billion came from a counter drug account, which allowed the money to be used to block what it calls drug smuggling corridors. Another horse has died at Santa Anita Park in California. It's the 31st thoroughbred that has died since this racing season began in December. Santa Anita says the horse was a four-year-old gelding named Zeke. They say the animal died after breaking its pelvis on the training track earlier this week. The track's owners say they are investigating factors that could have contributed to Zeke's injury. Officials say they will continue to work with the California Horse Racing Board and promise to be transparent with the public. The National Hurricane Center says Tropical Depression has 10 has formed in the Atlantic. It could become a tropical storm Jerry very soon. The strengthening storm could become a hurricane by Friday as it nears the outer Caribbean islands. The storm is about 1100 miles east of the southeast of the Leeward Islands this morning. The National Hurricane Center says it is too early to tell if there'll be any impacts of the storm felt here in the United States. But back here at home, we're not talking about hurricanes or rain <laughs> or tropical depressions. Todd, it is dry. Yeah, we need some rain. The only number I've been changing on this graphic, and I know I've been showing it to you every day, but that is how far below normal. We haven't put any additional rain in. Still only one one hundredth of an inch of rain. So we're 1.74 inches below normal as we make our way here. And now into the middle to end of September, we really do need some rainfall. And it looks like finally on Sunday, we'll have at least the potential to get some rain in here, but until then, it is a dry and sunny pattern here all across the area. As far as what's happening this morning, skies are mainly clear. You notice a little bit of patchy fog trying to settle in here to the downtown area. A little better chance of seeing that fog as you work your way across northern portions of the area. 66 degrees. It's really a comfortable morning. That dew points back down to right around 60 degrees, and that's a very comfortable number for us. So as you walk out the door this morning, it is running a little bit cooler than it has the past past few mornings. We're at 60 in Bloomington and Muncie and Richmond. 59 is the current temperature in Tipton. And I wouldn't be surprised with the clear skies and the light winds here this morning that these temperatures drop another couple degrees. And there could be a few more 50s out there uh, before we start to warm things up once the sun comes up. The clouds continue to fade away. Skies are mainly clear this morning. The storm track all week long has been well off to our northwest. Once again, storms moving through Minneapolis and that's where they'll stay throughout the day today. So with the sunshine this morning will quickly warm through the 60s into the mid 70s by the time we get to the lunch hour then we'll be in the 80s throughout the afternoon with high temperatures today climbing into that 85 to 87 maybe 88 degree range for most of us across the area and then throughout the evening hours tonight we'll fall back down into the 70s pretty quickly should be a very very pleasant night with sunset this evening at 749 tomorrow we do it all over again not much changes we start off in the mid 60s we 
warm into the mid to upper 80s with skies that will be partly cloudy. And then going forward in this forecast, we look ahead to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Your weekend, it's a warm one with temperatures that will be in the 80s. Friday, mostly sunny. High school football should be great. Saturday, partly cloudy. And then on Sunday, that's when the cold front comes through. And that will bring our next opportunity in here to see some showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. The timing as of right now would be afternoon and into the evening. Then a few spotty storms linger into next week with temperatures returning to the 70s for afternoon highs. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a live look right now at traffic here to the southeast. I-465 in Arlington Avenue or in dot traffic camera in that area. Everything traveling eastbound, northbound on 465 in this area is open and traveling smoothly. The opposite direction that's still closed for that construction project. Schedules are reopen by Saturday. Let's take a look right now at our Traffic Now map. Plan out your commute here on this Wednesday as you're traveling eastbound from Ronald Reagan Parkway to I-65 at the South Split. It's a 12-minute drive. No delays there to slow you down. And let's take a live look right now at I-70 to our west. This is just a little east of State Road 267. And you can see things there are traveling just fine. As students get settled into the school year, hackers are taking advantage. Cybersecurity providers say hackers have been sending more malicious emails this year to schools than ever before. Cybersecurity threats aren't really anything new. What's elevating the number of threats is how much schools communicate online. Some of that info could also be appealing to a predator. That's because schools have access to things like demographic information, discipline records, and intellectual and psychological profiles. While there are tools to protect students and staff, experts say schools aren't being proactive enough. That's the hardest thing is convincing people that these things are happening to them, right? Then not just to someone else somewhere else far away in their neighborhoods, in their schools, and they can take steps to prevent it. Security experts say schools need to hire their own security professionals to act as gatekeepers and be in charge of who requests and receives data. At 519, getting back into the school year also means protecting your students from a different type of virus. And we're talking about the flu. It may seem early to be thinking about the flu season with the warm weather we have here, but now is the time to make plans to protect your family. Doctors say that the best way to protect yourself from the flu virus is to get that flu shot. The flu virus has the ability to change change sometimes mid-season so the flu vaccine doesn't guarantee your family will avoid the flu altogether but doctors say it greatly reduces your chances of catching it the best time to get the flu vaccine is before flu spreads it takes anywhere between two to four weeks for your immune system to ramp up and be protected after you get your vaccinations Doctors say that the flu vaccines are recommended for all children over the age of six months. It's hard to believe, but the IndyCar season wraps up this weekend. After the break, how points leader Joseph Newgarden is preparing for Sunday's big race. And of course, we're giving a close eye on your commute on this Wednesday. And this is a live look at I-70 and Post Road over on the east side where traffic looks to be moving along up to speed. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break with more news, weather and traffic just ahead. Service. Tom Roush Lincoln now in Fishers. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. 523 here on our Wednesday. And this is a live look up in Carmel, US 31, just a little south of 116th Street. Everything there on the highway is traveling just fine. No issues here for your morning drive. Well, IndyCar season ends the 2019 season this Sunday at Laguna Seca. It is the race for the title, and four drivers have a shot at winning it all. Joseph Newgarden comes in with a 41-point lead. And as our Brad Brown tells us, Newgarden's season hasn't been perfect, but it may be good enough for his second IndyCar crown. You have the points lead going into the final race, but is it more pressure being the guy that they're chasing? Well, I think it's always more pressure when you're chasing. You know, if you're gonna, you're gonna tell me, do I prefer having 41 points up or being 41 points down? I'm gonna always choose being up. Um, but it, it does mean that it's probably more ours to lose, without a doubt. I mean, we're in the favorable position. Uh, you know, if we make a mistake and, and slip up, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt a lot more than if you're 41 points down. A couple of weeks off to get to this last race. How has it been stewing on all of this? Would you rather have gotten right into this last race or having 21 days to, to sit on it? 
It's, it's only been mildly terrible. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. <laughs> you norm, normally, two weeks off is, is okay. You, know, you, you kind of like it at some points in the year, uh, specifically after the month of May sure. when everyone's, you know, worn out and they need, they need a little break. But this was probably the time you didn't want to break. Um, <laughs> but we've tried, we've tried to use it. You've been in this championship position before. How does this feel different this time than the previous? Well, there's a little bit more cushion, yeah. Yeah, which is, I don't, I don't know if it's good or not. I mean, it's, it's 100 points. It's a lot of points. Sure. So 40, 41 up is not as, as big as it could be. We're more in control of our destiny this time around, but the, you know, the, the, the hair in the back of my neck is still standing up. I still feel like I just need to be alert because anything can go wrong. And uh, we just need to have a clean weekend. So in a lot of ways, it's the same, but for sure, there's a little bit more cushion. This is a beast of a track to end the season on. What is is your what do you feel Are you excited to do this nervous anxious this track is such an x-factor in, in this season finale it, it's essentially a new circuit the tracks a lot older um, so the the track the, the track surface itself is, is very different than what we're used to the tires are different the cars are different I don't know if that's good or bad for us um, it's probably gonna make it exciting for everybody so we just got to do our normal thing normally I like new tracks though so I, I'm hoping that plays in well to to our challenge all right, here at 525, we want to bring in Todd Clausen and talk about the forecast this week. Todd? Yeah, you know, it's pretty pleasant this morning, actually, with lower yeah. humidity and temperatures mm -hmm. that are in the 50s and 60s. So I think that's one change you'll notice as you walk out the door here this morning. But just like the past few days, we will warm very quickly throughout the course of the morning hours. And by the noon hour, already pushing that 80 degree mark. And then we'll continue to warm into the afternoon hours with those mostly sunny skies into the mid 80s. So kind of more mid 80s than upper 80s today, but all of a all, pretty nice Wednesday for us straight across the board. Todd, thank you. Riding a scooter or skateboard in Carmel could soon become more difficult ahead of 530 where city leaders are hoping to add new restrictions. And we're keeping a close eye on your morning drive. This is I-74 on Acton Road from our in-dot traffic camera. No issues here to slow you down. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Day at 10 on RTV6. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Downtown pedestrians are being forced to walk in the street as a busy sidewalk has been closed for several months now. Coming up, what officials say about the construction project causing concern. And local activists are calling for a Marion County prosecutor to issue an apology. The comments he made while announcing charges against an IMPD officer. But first, here at 530, we want to get a check at the weather. Yeah, and if you're stepping outside right now, Todd, I would say pretty comfortable. There's a little bit of a coolness in the air, not yeah. that stickiness that we're used to feeling. Yeah, you know, temperatures are in the 50s in some areas here this morning, and the humidity is low, so yeah, you you don't have that heat or humidity that you walk out to this morning and that's a subtle change that we do have in the forecast and a welcomed one at that but as we go throughout the day today we will warm it up really really quickly sunglasses needed as you walk out the door this morning as you don't need them until after 7 30 but once the sun does come up uh, you will definitely need them some fog i mentioned earlier last half hour that throughout the week the trend here has for been fog to build in as the morning goes on you're seeing it happen already now visibility in muncie now down below one mile. Some fog settling in near the Greenfield area as well. So be aware of that. But here in downtown Indianapolis, as you look off to the north, no issues whatsoever. But Kokomo, 50 degrees, 59 in Muncie, 60 in Bloomington, 66 in Indianapolis. The skies are clear. The closest rain band is off in Minneapolis, and that will not impact us here throughout the day today. So we warm quickly with the sunshine throughout the morning hours through the 70s. Should be into the 80s right around the noon hour, and then we'll continue Continue to warm into the mid 80s by your afternoon highs, Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you so much. We want to take a live look right now at traffic. This is over on the east side, I 70 and Sherman Drive. You can see traffic here is traveling up to speed this morning. No issues to slow you down. Let's take a look at our traffic now map, monitoring just a few slowdowns here along Keystone Avenue. That's normal due to construction. And then I 465 near Keystone, traveling westbound, looks just a little slow at this hour, but overall, no major issues. And now let's take a look over on the west side of town. No crashes here at I 70. A little west of Lyndhurst Drive. Great news if you're heading out the door at this early hour.
RTV6 is getting answers for downtown residents who say a construction project has kept the sidewalk at Market and Capitol Avenue closed for several months. So the pedestrians walking to the Red Line or the Capitol building from Monument Circle, well, they have to walk here and the street, as you can see. Downtown residents say it's unsafe and they've been making do for the past several months now. Officials say the sidewalk will likely stay closed. Construction is set to be complete in late October. I saw end of October in there and my heart sank because it was a decently accessible sidewalk to begin with. It was wide enough wheelchair users use this path regularly. And so I said it's so inaccessible the way it is now for people to have to cross the street. It's been months and months. Now we're going into the end of October. Still unacceptable. Should have been done months ago. Indigo says it is working to make the ramp ADA compliant as part of the red line street and sidewalk infrastructure work. So if you have a problem and you need some help getting answers, you can contact us at working for you at rtv6.com. Your city or town may be getting more or less money than expected to fund road repairs. This is all due to an accounting error. According to Indianapolis City County Councilor Jared Evans, the state auditor discovered the mistake. It came in calculating how to distribute money from an account that's funded through fuel taxes, vehicle registration costs, and other transportation fees. This new information comes as a city county commission to study infrastructure met on Tuesday night. Uh, we think it's a positive impact for Indianapolis residents, so we're really excited about this. This is going to be additional funding uh, for our roads and sidewalks and bridges here in Indianapolis. Evans says the auditor is still working through the numbers. Other parts of the state could see a drop in road funding. A presentation will be made next month. At 533 this morning, Carmel is considering adding more restrictions on skateboards and scooters. They will no longer be allowed in Midtown, the Arts and Design District, and parking garages under this new proposed ordinance. Violators would be fined up to $100 for the first offense and up to $500 for subsequent offenses. RTV6 spoke to people on both sides of the issue. We are receiving complaints about skateboarders being in our um, municipal garages. The publicly owned garages, they love that speed, but it actually creates a very dangerous situation, not only for them, but making drivers uncomfortable as well. I really think that if you're going to put something like this down, like a ban, you need to provide other places for it to go. Skateboarding is already banned in areas like the Carmel City Center, Civic Square, the Veterans Memorial and Rotary Plaza. And there is a skate park in the Monon Community Center where skateboarding is allowed. Through the crossroads of America, semi-trucks carry tons of products to make their way to a destination. Getting classroom to crew ready, our Erin Lish is live at the National Transportation Center. And Erin, you're showing us how students can become technicians to keep those driver's trucks running. That's exactly it. From the things that you see in the grocery store all the way to those online deliveries, they have to get there at some point. So that is where the trucking industry comes into play. And students here are becoming the ones to help keep deliveries on time. Tyler Turnbull is learning about diesel and electronic tech through the National Transportation Center training. It's a lot more complicated than anybody will ever think. Instructors say companies are eager to find young technicians for the trucking industry. Um, when I got into the industry, there was a need, and now there's a huge need in, in diesel technicians. These future techs focus on six major areas in trucking. Electrical, brakes, engine repair, steering, suspension, and most importantly, safety. If we don't do our job, we're putting someone at risk. So their job is extremely critical to protecting everybody else that's going to be touching the products, the equipment, really all of that. Turnbull says people will be relying on him to do high quality work. It's a very high responsibility, but it's a responsibility somebody has to take on because the drivers, they run America. To get more techs out there to help drivers, NTC connects the students with scholarships so they can leave the 20 week training without paying a dime. This program is great and they offer me a lot of great opportunity, hands on, especially that's what I'm looking for. These students supporting the transportation industry as they build themselves a future career. It's still too good to be true, but I'm learning a lot here and I love it. 
So NTC wants veterans, underemployed, and the youth to take advantage of this opportunity. To be in this training, you'll need a driver's license, high school diploma, or something equivalent to that. You also have to be 18 unless you are 17 and about to turn 18 within five months of the training. Back to you in the studio. Aaron, thank you. Local activists want the Marion County prosecutor to apologize for comments he made while announcing charges against an IMPD officer. Here's what he said. When she was asked to leave the property, uh, rather than doing so or talking uh, uh, in a calm manner with the IPS officer who was asking her to leave, she screamed, she yelled, she dropped F-bombs, she dropped MFers. Terry Curry made that comment about the aunt of a teenager who was punched by an IMPD officer outside of Short Ridge High School last month. The organization's IMPD Transparency, Answer Indiana, and Indy 10 Black Lives Matter released a joint statement calling Curry's criticism outrageous. The group is also calling on the prosecutor's office to not offer Officer Robert Lawson a plea agreement. He faces several charges this morning. Time right now is 537. Police are now working to learn how a person ended up dead in a wood wooded area on the southeast side of Indianapolis. Officers were called to a tree line section of Shelby Street near the I-65 underpass just before noon on Tuesday. Investigators say the person's identity, how they died, and how long their body had been in this area, those are all questions they don't have answers for at this time. The man convicted in a deadly I-70 crash that killed an Indianapolis Colts player and his Uber driver has been sentenced in federal court for illegally re-entering the country. A federal judge sentenced Manuel Orego Savala from Guatemala to three and a half years in federal prison on top of his 16 year prison sentence from a state court. Investigators say Orego Zavala was in the country illegally at the time of the crash. He's accused of having a blood alcohol content three times the legal limit when the truck he was driving crashed into a vehicle on the shoulder of I-70 near Holt Road in February of last year. The collision killed Colts linebacker Edwin Jackson who was a passenger in the vehicle and and Uber driver Jeffrey Monroe. Today an Indianapolis woman will mark what would have been her husband's 58th birthday. She's not giving hope that someone will share information to help catch her husband's killer. Curtis Wooden was shot and killed back in December of 2016 outside of an apartment near 21st Street and I-465 on the east side shortly after he left home to buy lottery tickets. A memorial for Wooden will be held this evening at 630 on Little John Drive where that shooting took place. His widow hopes that this will put his case back in the spotlight. You already know about the benefits of donating blood, but you can also help save a life by donating bone marrow. Riley Children's Health is hosting a bone marrow registry drive today from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Bone marrow transplants are used to treat some cancers, sickle cell, and other diseases. But not all patients have family members who can donate, so they rely on strangers to help. And Todd, is such an important and easy thing to do, so if people have time during their lunch hour just go on by Riley and swab your cheek yeah it's Easy as simple as, that. as it's as simple as that it's like a little q-tip they just swab your cheek and you are good to go no pain whatsoever and it helps so many so many people our right, outside right now it is actually pretty comfortable as you walk out the door it's a little cooler today compared to the past few days humidity is down and throughout the duration of your morning commute we'll have lots of sunshine with temperatures that will be in the 60s some of you have dipped down into the 50s already this morning especially in northern locations where the skies are a little bit clear but you look off to the west and there's hardly any clouds and without the clouds you can't have any rainfall and we have a dry forecast for you once again from start to finish throughout the day today low 80s to the north mid 80s for your high temperatures in southern locations throughout the day today as far as our next chance of rain goes that is not until sunday that's when a cold front is going to come through there'll probably be a line of showers maybe a few thunderstorms a couple of those showers could linger into early monday but until then the first half of your weekend, including Friday evening, will be completely dry. We'll talk more about your extended forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is on his way to visit Saudi Arabia after attacks on their oil facilities. Next, what the U.S. is doing to coordinate a response. And more schools are looking to ban chocolate milk after the break. Why officials think this is a good idea and the health concerns some pediatricians have about the change. And here at 541, we're 
keeping a close eye on traffic. This is a live look from our in-dot traffic camera at I-465 and Keystone Avenue, where we had some reported slowdowns in the westbound lanes, but it looks like everything is still traveling up to speed there on the north side. Stick around. We'll be right back after this short break. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will soon be arriving in Saudi Arabia to discuss the attack on Saudi oil facilities. U.S. investigators are already on the ground there trying to determine if Iran is responsible for the weekend attack. This morning, a team of investigators from the U.S. military is in Saudi Arabia recovering and examining what one U.S. official says is compelling forensic evidence. That evidence, according to the official, collected from the debris of nearly a dozen cruise missiles and some 20 drones that targeted and hit the Saudi oil facilities. They'll take things like flight control services and match them to known Iranian pictures of the cruise missiles they build. A senior administration official says there is enough information showing the weapons were fired from Iran. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is scheduled to meet with the Saudi prince later today to coordinate a response to this attack. SpaceX is now trying to expand its private space travel operation to the internet. The company is aiming to beam internet across the southern U.S. by late next year. Its ultimate goal is to become one of the world's largest internet providers. To do this, they would have to deploy a constellation of thousands of satellites called Starlink to provide broadband from space. The FCC hasn't yet given SpaceX the go-ahead to reconfigure satellites. A report estimates that Starlink could turn SpaceX into a $52 billion company. Heavy rain is falling across parts of Texas this morning as tropical depression Imelda made landfall. The storm could give Houston area the heaviest rain since Hurricane Harvey back in 2017. Imelda hit Texas yesterday and it's slowly moving north about seven miles per hour. It reached tropical storm status, but has since been downgraded to a tropical depression. The heavy rain and dangerous flash flooding is expected to last through the rest of the week. Somewhere we have not seen a lot of rain is back here at home, Todd, and looks like we may be dealing with one other little issue this morning. Yeah, a little bit of patchy fog, but as far as the rain goes, this is one of the driest Septembers on record so far for uh, the city of Indianapolis. We've only had one one hundredth of an inch of rain, so I think that puts us borderline four in five on the driest September's in the record books. I know some areas to the north have seen a little more in the way of rainfall, at least compared to the city. As far as where we're dealing with some patchy fog this morning, it's kind of settled into Delaware County here. Uh, as you make your way into the Muncie area, this rating comes officially from the airport. You notice little impact here on Interstate 69, but the, the more dense fog is the further east you go in the county. But keep in mind, this will fluctuate just a little bit as we extend back westward. Visibility is reduced along US 31 as you make your way through Tipton as well as Kokomo. Uh, but anytime you're over one mile, I really don't expect any impacts, at least on the roadways or as far as any school delays go or anything like that. Here's the view in downtown Indianapolis, and you can see just a little bit of fog out there. Otherwise, we are in pretty good shape here uh, this morning with clear skies, but temperatures are a little cooler. We're at 60 right now in Bloomington, 66 in Indianapolis. That is the warmer spot as it typically is, but some of these northern locations have dipped down into the 50s here this morning. Kokomo, you're at 55, 57 in Logansport. So this is by far the coolest morning that we have seen so far this week. As you walk out the door this morning, I think you'll notice that change uh, right away. As you know, the past few mornings, we've had some fog. We've had some humidity around. Not the case here this morning. You notice the clouds basically have fizzled away. And as we expand out for you, you notice off to our west, it's been another rough go in Minneapolis. They had storms yesterday morning. Morning. They have storms obviously this morning as well, but none of that is going to impact us here in central Indiana. So as your forecast breaks down for the day today, we'll warm it up quickly with the low humidity and all the sunshine that we'll see. We'll easily be through the 70s by the 10 a.m. hour, near 80 degrees by the time we get to the noon hour. Lunch should be beautiful if you're heading out and about for that. And then we'll see temperatures eventually climb into the mid to upper 80s across the area for your afternoon highs. This evening should be great for any outdoor outdoor plans. Temperatures go from the 80s. As soon as the sun sets, we'll see those temperatures fall back down into the 70s. And then for the day tomorrow, we just do it all over again. We're starting off maybe a little bit warmer tomorrow morning in the mid to upper 60s. And then highs will eventually top off in the mid to upper 80s. So tomorrow, warmer to start, warmer to finish. 
but it features mostly sunny skies. And then looking ahead to the weekend, this is when we finally get some changes in here. Saturday's dry with skies that'll be partly cloudy and a high temperature of 87 degrees. Sunday, storms develop through it out the afternoon hours as a cold front comes through. Now, I will say it's been very, very dry here. So a lot of times when you have this dry air mass and dry air you have to overcome, you'll see a line of storms coming. They may break apart, so it's not a complete guarantee. Everybody's going to get rain on Sunday, but it is the best chance in our forecast of seeing some rainfall. And then some showers could continue into Monday as well. But what that front will do on Sunday is it will cool us down. As we go into Monday and Tuesday, we'll still be running a tick above normal, but high temperatures We'll be back into the upper 70s. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at our traffic now. Maps planning out your commute, looking at drive times here on southbound I-65, heading into downtown from the northwest side. And it looks like we have a little bit of a delay here as you're heading past I-465, a 24-minute commute at this hour. So it's only really tacking on a few extra minutes, so nothing too crazy there. Here on the west side of town as you're taking I-74 into I-465, it's a seven-minute drive from State Road 267. So traffic there is traveling smoothly through Brownsburg. Let's take a live look right now to our northwest I-65 here in 71st Street. It really looks like everything is traveling about up to speed. Of course, we'll continue to keep a close eye on this area. Some ongoing construction. You can see some flashing lights, so we'll let you know if there are any major delays for your commute. Jeopardy's Alex Trebek says he is still battling stage 4 pancreatic cancer. The popular quiz show host revealed that his doctors are ordering him to, him to undergo chemotherapy once again. Trebek says he lost 12 pounds in one week and his numbers went, quote, sky high, prompting more treatments. He announced the end of his first round of chemo last month and returned as Jeopardy host for its 36th season. The new season began or airing earlier this month. With obesity being a growing problem here in the United States, many places are making efforts to limit sugary drinks. But now some schools are considering banning chocolate milk. The New York Department of Education is thinking about the ban, citing that chocolate milk has about double the sugar than regular milk. But other areas across the country have already banned that drink. San Francisco made the change back in 2017 after testing it in their schools. Washington, D.C. schools saw backlash when they banned chocolate milk in 2011. Some health professionals had concerns about kids missing out on calcium and vitamin D. I do agree that having some calcium, some milk um, is better than no milk, even if there is um, a little bit of added sugar. Um, but I think that the more that we can move towards eliminating all of the extra sugars, it's, it's going to be better for our kids in the long run. Well, Cornell studied the effects of the ban back in 2014 and found that students on average consumed less sugar and fewer calories, but they also consumed less protein and less calcium. A sticky situation as thousands of pounds of Nutella was spilled across an Indiana highway. Coming up, the crash that caused the chocolatey mess. Drive at Honda Fishers. A sticky situation on an Indiana highway as thousands of pounds of Nutella were spilled on the road. A semi-truck carrying 44,000 pounds of the chocolate hazelnut spread crashed on I-94 near the Indiana-Michigan state line Monday night. The driver said he swerved to avoid hitting a car in front of him and crashed into the median barrier. The truck ended up on its side spilling the Nutella. The driver was not hurt, but the wreck did shut down the highway for more than two hours. I bet that smelled pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the diesels yes. mixed in, of yes. course. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, we do want to talk to Todd right now about today's forecast. Todd, more of the same. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty quiet forecast. If you're a fan of these warm temperatures and the sunshine, you're going to like today's forecast as well. One minor difference is the temperatures. You notice on both sides of me, a little cooler today. We have some 50s out there from Zionsville up towards Logansport. Once again, this morning, there is a little bit of patchy fog that is trying to get going here across the area. Indiana Apple's running a little bit warmer at 64, 58 in Muncie. So no matter where you're starting this morning, whether you're in the 50s or the 60s, we're going into the mid 80s for your afternoon high. 86 degrees will be your high temperature. It's a sunny day with those above normal temperatures. Get out there and enjoy. We do finally have some changes heading our way. We'll talk about it coming up in the 6 o'clock hour here on Good Morning Indiana. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Coming up in the next half hour, Call 6 Investigates has a new twist on an old phone scam. The Call Federal Investigators are warning you about. And state police are learning more about an infant's death after the child was dropped off at a babysitter's house. Coming up, the investigation, the latest on that investigation.